I'm called him Savior, the Redeemer of man, but I call him Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. Oh, it seems no one can help you and your life is out of hand just remember i know a man mark matthew 20 29 to 34 reads, Jesus and his disciples went to Jericho. And as they were leaving, they were followed by a large crowd. A blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When he heard that Jesus from Nazareth, when he heard that it was Jesus from Nazareth, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Many people told, told the man to stop, but he shouted even louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, I hope you catch it, church. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, God. Have mercy on me, Lord. For I need you, Lord. I need you. I need you, God. Have mercy on me. Even though they say to shut up, have mercy on me, God. Even though they say be quiet, have mercy on me, Lord. Even though they say be quiet, be quiet. Do not trouble the, the, the Father. Have mercy on me, God. Have mercy, Father. Jesus, do not pass me by. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by, Lord Jesus. Do not pass me by. I am blind and cannot see, have mercy. Do not pass me by. I am in need of you, Lord. Do not pass me by. I cannot do this walk by myself. Do not pass me by. I am naked. I am hungry. Do not pass me by. I am thirsty. I am desperate, God. Do not pass me by. I am in need of you, God. Do not pass me by, God. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy. Do not pass me by. Mm. Do not pass me by. Do not pass me by, God. Is that your cry today, church? That every move the Holy Spirit would move. That he will not move and you, you do not discern. You do not interpret what is happening in the Spirit. Do not pass me by. Whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me, God. When you move, Lord, do not move without me, God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name, God. Pastor Grayson, before we all sit, just fill my cup, please. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and place. It's the blessing of my soul. Fill my cup, fill it up. Like the woman, like the woman, like the woman, like the woman, like the woman. At the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. But then I heard my Savior calling, door from the world that never Fill my cup, Lord. Hallelujah. I lift it up, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Yes, God. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this sting of my soul. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me I come, fill it up, and make me home. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me home. Fill my cup, fill it up. And make me whole. Fill my cup. Fill it up. And make me whole. Fill my cup. Fill it up. And make me oh, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. God, we bless your name. God, we bless your name, God. Father, we lift your name on high, God. We bless your name, God. 
God, we bless your name, God. Mm. How great you are, God. Mm. How great you are, God. How great you are and greatly to be praised, God. How great you are and greatly to be praised, God. We bless your name, God. Father, the, the elders cast their crowns before you. Mm. Father, the enemy has to bow before you. The enemy has to ask permission, God. Father, we bless your name, God. Father, you are the only omnipotent being. Mm. Father, you are the only omnipresent being. Father, you are the only omniscient being. Mm. God, we bless your name. Father, we are not tired of worshiping you, Lord. You are great, Lord. You are great, Lord. You are great, Lord. Father, you exceed everything that we could ever think, God. We bless your name, God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the God that is able to do exceeding abundantly, Father. Hallelujah to the God that knows <laughs> the end from the beginning. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name, God. We worship you, God. Worthy is the King of Kings. Worthy is the Lord of Lords. Worthy is the God of Heaven. Worthy is the God of Heaven. Worthy is the God of Heaven. Worthy is the God who answers by fire. Worthy is the God who answers by fire. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy is the God that answers by fire. Worthy is the God who answers by fire. Worthy is the God who answers by fire. Worthy is the God who burns up everything before him. Worthy is the Lord who is able to do everything and everything. Everything and anything, God. Worthy are you, Lord. And worthy you are to be praised, God. Father, we bless your name. We honor your name, God. We lift you on high, Father, because we know that there is none like you, God. How great. How great. Sing. Sing how great, how great, how great you are, God. You are worthy and worthy to be praised, God. How great, how great, how great. Mm. Our simple minds cannot conceive. Our simple minds cannot interpret or comprehend how great you are, Father. Hallelujah. Father, I bless your holy name. I worship you, God. I stand not in my own strength, God. For I am nothing before you, Lord. I acknowledge, Lord, that I am nothing before you. Without you, I am nothing, God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will sing how great, how great is our God. Personalize it. How great is my God. Sing with me how great is my God. And all will see how great, how great, how great is my God. One more time. How great is my God. Sing with me. How great is my God. And all we see how great is my God. 
You may be seated. You may be seated. Yes. Mm. Welcome. 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 Welcome, sir. Not sure where I've I've seen your face or before, but I've I've I can't recall, but you know, I've seen your face somewhere. And I know you could sing before you even started singing. Um <laughs> Persons online, welcome. If there's any visitors online, welcome. I greet you all. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I must give honor to the man of God, to the woman of God, Reverend McLean and Pastor Kashina McLean. When you don't see them online, they're working, nevertheless. Um, Pastor Ba. Sorry, Pastor Osborne. <laughs> I bless God for you, woman of God. Very, very powerful worshiper, as we would have had the opportunity for her to lead us into a time of worship just now. I bless God for you. I love your spirit, woman of God. Your spirit is unique. Um, I feel like I've known you for some time. <laughs> but, and I like that. I like that. I really like that. Bless God for you. Revelations 3, 7 to 10. Quickly, let me just read it. To, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These are the words of him who is holy and true who holds the key of David, what he opened, no man can shut. And what he shuts, no man can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my words and have not denied my name. Who is God talking to? Who is God talking to? Is, 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 is that passage, is that little passage there for you? Is God talking about you? I have placed an open door that no man can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have, and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, your word is pure. Your word is true. Your word is just. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, I pray that as you have spoken to me concerning this word, Father, I pray, Lord, that the hearts of your people, Father, will be ready, Father, to receive what you have placed on my heart, Father. I pray, God, that it will be fertile soil, Father, that the word will fall on. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that every distraction be put under the subjection of Jesus Christ now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, that every spirit, Father God, that is not your Holy Spirit, that is not your holy angels, we rebuke them and we send them out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Turn to the person beside you and say, what God opens, no man can shut. What God opens, no man can shut. And what he, he shuts, no man can open. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say that for me, please. Amen. It's a declaration. 
And when we declare things here at Kingdom Builders, we believe them. We don't just declare them because we have the ability to speak. We declare them understanding that our words have power. Amen? We've been taught as such. So if you did not know before, you now know. Amen? Pastor Asborn preached a very powerful message yesterday. Stand up, ye army. She made reference yesterday to being in an army. And some of the characteristics that need that you need to be a part of an army. You have to be tough. You have to be resilient. Her favorite word that she mentioned yesterday. You have to be resilient. You have to be a leader. And also being able to serve. You have to, if it is that you are a part of an army, ready to fight at any given moment. If it is that you would remember movies of old, they would have to be ready. When the camp is set and it's, it's night, the sword couldn't be in the back. The sword had to be where you could easily stretch. If the battle cry was sounded, you have to stretch and pull your sword and, and ready. It can't. Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Finish it, no man. We're bright, in no a man. Right, right. But principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, where? So it means it is not who you see you're fighting against. We have to understand that the army that we are a part of is not a physical army. in a spiritual army. And we have to understand that any given moment, a fight may break out. And we have to be ready. We have to be tough. We have to be resilient. We have to be mentally ready to fight. Yesterday, again, Pastor Osborne mentioned about being tough mentally. I've worked with I, I, more than others, the mental toughness it takes to be a soldier. Even though I am not one, when I look on and I, I see what they go through and, and when I go to their training bases, I, I understand the mental toughness that you have to have to even make it through the end of the training. If it is that you are not first mentally tough, you're going to be one of the per first persons going home. Your mental toughness is key if you are part of an army. And I say to you today, kingdom builders, in the auditorium, persons online, your mental toughness is key if it is that you are going to be a part of the army of God. The slightest little thing cannot rattle you. The things, I, I, I've mentioned this before, the things that rattled you when you just became a Christian, five years into your journey, should not be rattling you. Means you are not growing. <laughs> Means that the mental toughness that you need is not yet developed. And you are at a disadvantage. Let me just put that out there. When you're not mentally tough in an army, you are at a disadvantage, church. Because the Bible states that it is with the mind that we serve God. He attacks your mind first. I don't know how often that is going to be said. 
and at what point we as believers are going to truly understand that statement that the fight goes on in your mind because he understands, and when I say he, I mean the devil, he understands that if he can distract your mind, if he can put some worry in your mind, then you are not in a position to worship, to pray, to praise, to serve, to do anything. If he has your mind, truth be told, he has you. I pray that we don't miss it today, church. In our spiritual walk, we, we are doing, in, in our Bible study, we're doing spiritual gifts. And, you know, I was saying to Nurse Dawkins some time ago that I used to pray for the, the, the gift of, of, of the prophetic. Because I, I, I used to pray also for the, the gift of interpretations of tongues. Because I'm, I'm saying to myself that I, I'd want to know what persons around me are seeing. And then I would also want to know what I'm seeing. So I've, I've prayed earnestly about those two gifts. The gift of prophecy and the gift of interpretations of tongues. But the Holy Spirit has shifted my ask now. And I'm now praying for the gift of discernment. I'm now praying for the gift of wisdom. Pastor Cash mentioned that we should not be so after the gifts, but the giver of the gifts. But the Bible also encourages us to ask for. So I, as it relates to the gifts, I personally pray for those two gifts. Interpretation, sorry, not interpretation. Um, discernment and wisdom, especially as a leader, I think those two are very, very key. The gift of prophecy, it can come, and if it doesn't come, God is still God, and I will serve him nevertheless. If interpretations of tongues do not come, God is still God, and I will serve him nevertheless. But I am, I am going after those two gifts because those two gifts are needed, needed in the kingdom of God. Discernment, to put it short, we, we got a definition. But to put it short, it means to judge well. And I believe that every believer, every believer, whether here, abroad, online, should go after the gift of discernment. The gift to be able to judge well. To be able to discern what's going on around us. To see things that our naked eyes cannot see. To under, understand things that only the spirit can understand and interpret. Why is it important to go after this gift? Lack of discernment can lead to a few things. Missed opportunities. Missed encounters. Missed blessings. And even, ultimately, missing God. I'm going to go over the last few. Missed opportunities. Missed encounters. Missed blessings. And even missing God. If blind Bartimaeus did not discern who Jesus is, he would have missed that opportunity to get his healing. He would have missed that encounter. He would have missed the opportunity to be well. And I think Jesus has a very very, very strange sense of humor. And then I understand it. He would ask, even though he sees that the man is blind, what can I do for you? <laughs> First time I read that, I was like, 
Jesus, the man is blind. What do you mean? What can I do for you? The man is blind. The man needs his sight. Yeah, it's, it goes without saying. But saying what you need now activates something different. I need my sight. It now activates something different. Jesus already knew that blind Bartimaeus needed his sight. But he humbled himself and said, Lord, I need to see. That Lord, I need to see, activated something different. And that is what that does. The discerning and having discernment, church, we will understand that it is important. It is very key. And for where God is taking us, I will always go back to Pastor Osborne's message about I am an m ms In order to experience the miracle, experience the more, you'll have to discern it. It won't look like the miracle. It won't look like the more. It won't look like the mercy. But if you have that gift of discernment, then you will realize, you will understand that even though it doesn't look like it, it is there. You'll have to discern it. Amen? Matthew 16, 1 to 3 reads, The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking, asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, When evening comes, you say, It will be fair weather. For the sky is red, and in the morning today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret signs of the times. A wicked, a wicked and adulterous gener generation look for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. Do not be like the Pharisees and the scribes who do not discern who Jesus is. I made mention to blind Bartimaeus, and, and you can see the contrast in discerning how Bartimaeus discerned who Jesus is and the difference with the scribes and the Pharisees. And I'm going to say they deliberately chose not to because. Discerning Jesus as the Savior, they'll now have to change. And do you know that there's persons who really do not want to change? Sin is nice. No matter how much you minister to them, no matter how much you show them, no matter how much God, as in Jamaican terms, give them a lick, poof them in a them back, they still will not change because. They love sin so much. And the enemy has his, his, his hooks in them so deep that even if they want to come out, it's not that easy for them. So, and that's the, con the contrast between the two. The Pharisees, Bartimaeus, discerning that Jesus is the Lord and God. And he was able to heal him. In the same chapter, down in verse 19, it reads, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Anybody want God to say that to them? Anybody want God to say that to them? I don't know about anybody else, but... For Jesus to say, I'm going to give you the keys. <laughs> if Jesus made reference to keys, pay attention to the verse, verse 19. Matthew 16, verse 19, you can go to it. It says keys. If the verse says keys, that it simply means that it's more than one door. 
Yes? If Jesus spoke about keys, it must open a, a door. Jesus is not one to just speak because he has the ability. Hence why I mentioned before that we have to understand that we should not just speak because we are able to speak. Because our word, as silly they may sound, how soft they may sound, they come with power. Pastor Osborne made mention yesterday that what we speak of our children is very, very important. A ugly boy, a idiot boy, and everything else that would come with negativity. The sooner we understand that, it's the sooner then we will now understand that our words, simple them as they may sound, have power. I have made it a practice in my life, not even to run certain jokes anymore. And as soon as someone says anything that I am not in agreement with, I shut it down immediately. Because I understand that that's how curses are transferred. That's how things are said over you that would put you in that bind for the rest of your life. Because you're ignorant to the fact that words have power. I jump over to the passage in Revelations 3, verse 8. I know your deeds. God knows your deeds, church. God knows your deeds, Brother Omar. I do not know them. Sister Carleen, God knows your deeds. Every person in here, God knows your deeds. Michael Lee, God know your deeds. And because God knows my deeds, then he will treat me and deal with me accordingly. And those deeds can be good deeds. Those deeds can be bad deeds. And he will deal with me. I'm not even calling anyone else's name. I'm dealing with me. God is going to deal with you, Michael Lee, based on your deeds. Whether your deeds are good, whether your deeds are bad, God is going to deal with you according to your deeds. And I understand this. I understand this very, very clearly that my deeds is going to be what is going to be used along with my words. On that day, that given day when God is about to judge each and every man. He's going to say, give an account for this. Give an account for that. I know your deeds. Now give an account for them. Amen? I have placed before you an open door that no man can shut. Repeat that for me. I have placed before you an open door that no man can shut. Because God has opened a door that no man can shut, then we will have to understand that the keys that Jesus gave us the keys that we would use to open those doors. The authority that Jesus gave when he died and rose. Those doors are now accessible to us. We no longer have to wait. We now have access to those doors. We have to understand that what was hard before Jesus came is now easy. That Christianity is not hard. It's now made easy. What, does, what purpose does a door serve? Or it represents completion. A house is not complete 
Have you ever looked at an unfinished building? It just looks some type of way without a door, don't no? Even when it's, even when everything else's windows are in, it just looks incomplete without the door being on, right? The door offers security. It offers privacy. It also can represent opportunities and new beginnings. And when we go forward, understanding that doors, completion, security, privacy, opportunities, and new beginnings, then we would move differently. We would walk, we would talk differently. Because we now understand that the doors that are set before us means different things. When we understand that doors in our lives represents and, and signifies different things, miss, uh, opportunities, new beginnings, changes, you can walk through a door that can literally change your life. You can, a door can be opened for you that would change the entire trajectory of your life. And also you can walk through a door that can really change your life for the worse. Mm -hmm. We will come to different doors in life, whether physically or spiritually. When we come to different doors in life, then we will understand in a deeper way, depending on the type of door that it is, when we discern the type of door, and I go back to the reason why discernment is important, being able to discern the door that is in front of you, being able to discern what's on the next side of this door. And when we discern what's on the next side of the door, then we will know if that door is for us. We will know if that door is a trap. We will know if that door is the next move that God wants us to take. Discerning spiritual doors means another level. If it is that you've been praying and you've been seeking and you've been fasting, God, what next for me spiritually? You will have to discern in the spirit. You will have to discern in the spirit what this door means. What does this door signify? God, I've been praying. I've been seeking. I've been fasting. Is this the door that you have sent? Is this the door to the next level? The same thing applies with physical doors. Is this the door of that promotion, God? Is this the door that will take me to where you have promised me? A lot of us don't like to hear this. Is this another door of waiting? God is going to oftentimes allow us to go to that door of more weight. <laughs> more weight. More weight. More weight. Thank you. You are seated already in the waiting room. <laughs> and God says, get up and move. Go to that door. And you open the door. And it's another waiting room just to see what your reaction will be. Will you get frustrated? Have you ever been to an interview or to an office and it's more than one waiting room? You're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. You think, you th <laughs> thank you. You wait at the lobby, you go through the door and then it's another waiting room. All of that is just to see if it was the door to the next level what would your rea reaction be? And if it's not, will you, t will you just turn away? I can't bother. I don't want to work. I'm going home. They might take too long. Especially if the interview is supposed to be at nine. 
you're waiting until 11. I don't know what I want this job. I've gone home. I've actually seen that happen, though. I've actually been at my current job, and I've heard persons say, can't bother me. I go home. They might take too long for the little interview. I've actually heard persons say that they do not have a job, but the persons who are going to interview you for a job is taking too long, and they leave. I don't know. I guess, I guess being home is nice. I, I don't know. Discernment is very, very important. And that's where I'm going to pause for the next few minutes. Discerning the doors that is ahead of you. Discerning the doors that is set before you. Discerning the doors that God will deliberately put you in front of. There is a difference, church, between a door being closed or shut to it being locked. When a door is closed, you can just pull it up. Yes? Am I right or am I, or, or am I right? It's not locked, you know. It's just closed. When I say to you, close that door, you just pull it up. It draw up. Thank you. Right. Draw up the door. However, if someone that was not there comes and they would stand in front of the door, not understanding that the door is closed and not locked, they will leave not knowing that they can just simply turn the knob and go in. There'll be moments in our lives when we're going to come up in front of some doors and without discernment, we're going to think that door is locked and not closed. Those doors are going to be the doors to the next move, to the next step. But if it is that you do not discern that the door is, clo is, is closed and not locked, you're going to miss it. You're going to turn and go back to where you're coming from. And then someone else is going to come, try it, and enter. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. We have to, in this season, discern when we are in front of certain doors. God, is, is this door closed or it's locked? And we have to understand that the closed doors are going to be very important. The closed doors is going to take a different, something different, a different conversation between you and God. Because as you grow, the conversation should get even more frequent, right? Am I right? And when you come up in front of a door, whatever that door is, whether spiritually, whether physically, God, is this door closed or is it locked? Is this door from you or is this a trap? Is this door the door for my next opportunity? Is this door the door that represents new beginnings? A locked door means that you are going to need a key. A locked door means that you'll try it. You'll, if you're strong like me, you'll maybe try and break it off because the door is, is locked. It's not closed anymore. It is now locked. But again, discernment is important because you have to understand what is in front of you. Who placed it in front of you? Do you know that when you pray, that the devil also hears your prayers? And because he hears your prayers, then he can also put a door in front of you. I have made a mistake more than once, thank God for Jesus, of opening doors, going through some doors that was a trap. The prison doors 
the prison has doors as well. And I've walked in more than one situation that has trapped me because of a lack of discernment. I'm talking about me. I, I'm, I'm not, not talking about you guys, because maybe you guys are perfect. But I've been in situations where I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying, and I said, God, I need this, I need this. I need this, and I need it now with my bright self. God, I need this now because you, you, you see it and you know it. I need it now, Father. Put in demands and I'm going to quote two scripture and I say, yes, God, I hate this. The prayer conic and pride, speaking tongues and the prayer conic. But that don't mean nothing if it is that when the door comes, you do not say, God, is this you? And I have fell in that trap more than once where I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying. In my ignorance, a door comes. And I do not ask, God, is this you? I just turn, just turn doorknob and just go in. And then when I look at, but so weird, now I'm prison this. And, and let me tell you the trick about it. You don't realize it, it's a prison until the door is closed behind you. You won't realize that it's a prison that you are now in until you've closed. Sometimes it's not even you close the door behind you, you know. Sometimes it's an automatic close that the key leave, leave outside. That when you go in that, go through that door and, and the door is closed behind you and you turn and you look around, you're saying, wait, but this is, this is a prison. And all you shake that knob, all you try to get out, you, there's nobody, you're knocking. Not a soul. And now you're in that prison. Because even the prison have doors. I've made that mistake too often in my life through ignorance. Hence why my prayer now is after discernment. My prayer now is after wisdom. God, is this you? Because I refuse to go through another door. That is going to end me in our prison. I don't know about anybody else, but I refuse. I refuse. For where God is going to take me and where he is taking me, I refuse. I, I cannot waste any more time in our prison. I know that he's able to deliver me from the prison, yes. But you have persons who actually go in the prison and never make it out. You have persons who aren't as blessed as I am, who have made it through the prison doors and God deliver them. You have persons who actually, in both spiritually and physically, who go into prison alive and well and do not come out. Discernment is key, people of God. Discern the type of door in front of you. Discern who placed the door before, before you. Discern if the door is closed or it's locked. I pray we are getting it. I don't have much longer here. I pray we get it. Locked doors. Let me put it like this. Different doors comes with different ways of open them, opening them. Some doors you'll have to use a metal key. Some doors you'll use, right, a pin code. Some code you'll, some doors you'll use a swipe. Thank you. Some doors you'll just step and they'll open. Discern how you, how you unlock the door in front of you. Because we've experienced, we've, we spoke about doors being closed, right? Now we're talking about doors that are locked. How do you get through that locked door? 
we're going back to the keys to the kingdom. Matthew 16, verse 19, when Jesus said that, I give you the keys to the kingdom. That means it's more than one door. Yes? But how, what type of key is it that opens the door that is in front of you? The locked door that is in front of you, pastor. What type of key opens it? The key that opened my door. God may be giving me a metal key. But to you, he will give you a code. Hmm. And my key, my metal key, cannot. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, God, you're good. You know, <laughs> you know, persons will see you going through some things. There's a saying that they only see the glory, they don't see the story. They don't see how you've prayed and you've fasted for God to say, see your key here. That is going to open something exponential for you. And have you ever realized that depending on what is behind the door, the key is, is even more fancy? Have you ever realized that? If it is that you, let's use the, 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 a room that would keep the buckets and the mops and stuff is a metal key. Have you ever been in any building and you realize it's a metal key open that door? But to the vault, you'll realize that you'll need a, because it's of value. So the key now becomes even more important. Persons who do not understand what you would have done for your key, who would have, what you would have done for your door, my brother, will see and, and say, but God is a metal key in heaven in my hand. Why, why is a pin code that person get? Not understanding that you would have prayed and you would have fasted and you would have seek God on a different level. And God will give you access based on the level of your commitment. Based on the level of your discipline. That is the key. That is the access God is going to give you. If it is that you pray five minutes and you stop and you read your Bible only once a week, metal key I get, you know, just work with it. If you see Pastor Osborne with, when she go up to her door and she punch in her code and she go in, what you need to do, God, I see my sister, or the Bible says you should covet the things of righteousness. No, so, God, I see my, my sister has a code to her door. How may I get to that place? And the Holy Spirit, without a doubt, will say, come up a little higher. Do something more, man. Pray some more. If you want to get where she is at, where the access is different, you'll have to give something more, man. There's five minutes and there's two minutes and, and there's one minute and, and then sometime, no minutes. Metal key you're going to get. Persons who have that code, who have the swipe, who you will go, go before the door and it just open for you. It's a different, different thing. You have to do something different to get that, to get that access. Right. Eye recognition. Gone high tech for me, I know. Finger sprint, finger scan and all of them. Right. You'll have to do something different. Because every key do not open every door. God, I want to get to the point where my key is, is that code, my, my retina scanner, my, my fingerprint. I will do something different. Do not sit and mope and, 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 and even allow the enemy to come in that you would say, God, how we had it? I want a different key, you know. You know, sometimes. God is a real God. And God will come down to your level. So even if you speak patwa to God, God understands. Every single language. Thank you. 
So if it is that you are in that moment and you're saying, God, I need more of you. I need access to you on a different level. He will simply say, do something different then. Here's a song. William Murphy. He says, in order to experience God like never before, you have to do something that you've never done before. If it is that you're going to experience a different door, you'll have to do something that you've never done before. I'm going to repeat that because I don't want us to miss it. You know, persons online, if it is that you're going to experience God like never before, you'll have to do something that you've never done before. Amen? And we have to understand that because there's levels. There's levels. My metal key cannot open the keypad. First and foremost, there's not even a keyhole. It's a keypad. So even with your metal key, you go up to the door looking for the keyhole. You won't find one. Because persons who have done what is necessary to get that keypad, to get that code to, act, to have that type of access to God, we have to understand, we have to discern these things. We As we move continuously in our walk with God, church. And when we come up to doors of opportunities. When we come up to new beginnings in, in Christ. When we come up to new revelations in God. Then we have to, have to, have to use discernment. I cannot say it enough. Because that's what God has laid on my heart to say to us today. Discernment. To discern the door. Discern that it is closed and not locked. And when it is locked, what type of key opens that locked door? Everybody with me same way? I mentioned that the prison have doors. You know, it's, it's, it's very intriguing that the prison, the prison having, very intriguing that the prison have doors. And when it is that you are on the inside of those doors, That's when you would realize that, as they would say, your senses come back. When you're already in trouble. When you already made that mistake. When you've already fallen into the trap. But even those doors, even those prison doors have a key. What is that key? Lord, I have sinned. Lord, I have sinned, God. You see my heart and you know that I have sinned. Don't ever dare talk about you're going to serve out your time. You'll, you'll, ride out your, you'll ride out your storm. Because oftentimes you say we'll ride out your storm, you know. We, we don't repent, you know. We say we just go go to because it must come to an end. And then we quote scripture on top of that. Nothing lasts forever. Eh? It must come to an end. Not humbling ourselves and say, God, I am the reason why I'm in this position. Have mercy, as, as blind Bartimaeus said. Have mercy on me. I have sinned. We proud and we say, we, we must get through this because God are God. And at no point in time, we say, God, I have sinned. You, not knowing that, simply saying, 
God, I have sinned. He will come to your defense right there and then and say, let out this one. Irrespective if the devil would say, I can just imagine Jesus come and say, let out this one. He has repented of his sin and he now knows that he has done wrong. Let out this one. The devil would be like, what him just reach? Him not serve no time yet. Right. He hasn't served any time yet. But Jesus saying, I know, let out this one. Because you have humbled yourself and say, God, I have sinned. Sincerely, God, I have sinned. What I have entered into is not you. And I now know, I have now realized that what I have done, what I have entered into is not you. I have sinned, Lord. Have mercy on me. God will not allow you. God will not put you in situations that he knows that you cannot bear. However, there is the perfect will of God and then there is the permissive will of God. If it is that you are outside of the perfect will of God and you enter doors that you are not supposed to, you are now in the permissive will of God. He will still protect you However, it comes with consequences. It comes with consequences. Being in the permissive will of God, it will seem like, seem like this is God. However, it comes with consequences. But if it is that you Use discernment. God, I, I know this isn't you. And I repent. Put me back on, under the perfect will that you have for my life. The permissive will is not the entirety, Father. Put me back in the, permiss the, the perfect will of, of, of you, mighty God. As pastor said, jailbreak. Jesus comes and says, let out this one. Let out this one. But she hasn't served any time yet. Why, what do you mean? I said, let out this one. Okay. Because they, as much as he would like to debate and to question, you know, he, really isn't, he really doesn't have the authority to question Jesus. To ask, Why? Jesus said, just let out this one. I don't need to tell you what she has done. Just let out this one. I don't need to tell you what he has done. Just let out this one. And you are now back in the perfect, the perfect will of God. I pray we do not miss it, church. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I will make those I know your deeds at the beginning I asked if this if this passage is about you I know your deeds see I have placed before you an open door no one can shut I know that you have a little strength. Pastor Grayson, I know you have little strength and have not denied my name and you have kept my word. And because God has said that, again, it comes back to where you are with God. For God to say, you have not turned away from my name. I'm going to open a door before you. Because you, you have kept my word, I'm going to open a door before you. But again, 
try every spirit. Because as much as how God hears and, 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 and he listens to your prayers, so does the devil. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, they are not, but are liars, will make them come and fall at your feet. This is a promise. This is a promise, church. will make them come and fall at your feet and acknowledge that I, God, loved you since you have kept my commands to endure patiently. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently and I will keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole, whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. And I could not dare finish today without talking about the ultimate door, Jesus. I could not dare finish this message and not talk about the door. Of Jesus. The Bible says. That there is no way. To get to the father. But through. Jesus the door. There is no way to go further in your Christianity. But through the door. There is no way to. Move further spiritually, but through the door. No matter what you do, if it is not the door of Jesus, you're wasting your time. The door of Jesus gives us new access. And I am after new access. New access in the spirit. I am after God on a deeper level. I am after God on a more intimate level. And I will go after the door of Jesus. I will go after the door of Jesus because I understand that what I want, the more of God that I want, let me pull that let me pull that back the more of god that i need is through the door of jesus and we have to get to the place where it's jesus and more of jesus and more of jesus and more of jesus you cannot exhaust the door of jesus Again, there's levels to this thing. So when you, when you first put your faith in Jesus, that is one door. When you go higher, that's another door in Jesus. Remember, you know, Jesus owns the house, you know. The mansion that, that, that he speaks about, right, that he's going to prepare one. Yeah, man, that means that the house is his. So every door that you would go through in that mansion, it's his door. Represents him. So, so we have to understand that every door that is in that mansion is a different access point to our Father. And that is why I implore us to do what? To discern Discern, 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 church, discern, discern the closed door from the locked door, discern what type of key open the door that is in front of you, go after it, because ultimately, going after it, 
brings you closer to God. Brings you closer to God. Father, I thank you. Father, I have done my part, Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, that in this season, mighty God, and the seasons onward, Father God, Father, your word says that the enemy is like a roaring lion, Father God. Walking around, Father, seeing if he can devour your people, mighty God. Which one of your people he can devour, Father? Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that we will use discernment, Father God. And if we have not the gift, Father, we would ask you, mighty God. Father, your word says that if any man lacketh wisdom, mighty God, let him come to you, Lord. Mm. And you will give liberally. You will give freely, mighty God. Father, your word continues and it says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That going forward, Father, from this day on, mighty God, we will seek you, mighty God. We will seek you, Father God, that we do not end in, in prisons, mighty God. That you will do not end in traps that would destroy us, Father. Father, we would discern, Father God, and to, to ask you, Father God, is this you? Father, I pray, God, that as I have spoken what you have laid on my heart, Father. I have emptied my heart, mighty God, of what you have said. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that it will not go in one ear and through the other. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that something that I would have said would rest in their spirits, mighty God. Father God, and when they're in situations, Father God, where doors of opportunities come up, Father, where doors of potential new beginnings come up, mighty God. Father, they will use your discernment, Father, the gift of discernment, mighty God. Father God, and they will go through if you say go through, mighty God. Father, I thank you. I bless your holy name. I give you praise, glory, and honor, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.